Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now it's fair to say that we're living in very interesting times. The current population aged between 40 and 60 has had the opportunity to observe the emergence and subsequent discrediting of many of the foundational myths that have played a pivotal role in the downfall of empires and the transformation of mass consciousness. Now on the same day the Western press released a couple of reports within a couple of hours each other on the subject of oil and gas production in the USA. I mean the government released the figures for 2023 that showed that the US local gas producers had crossed the production line of 1 trillion cubic meters of natural gas in 2023. This is a historical record level that's unparalleled in history by any country. By way of illustration, Russia, which is in second place in the global rankings, produced 638 billion cubic metres over the same period and just short of its record level of 676 billion cubic metres. Iran and China were next in line, but they were four times less, only 200 billion each. Secondly, the Energy Information Administration, citing the US Department of Energy, reported that the United States exported $6 million of crude oil and petroleum products every single day in 2023. Now, this represents an increase of over 6% of the previous year, and the report also indicates that American companies have reduced their projected profits with the daily export of refined gasoline now standing at 900,000 barrels per day. Now that's the equivalent of 10% of their domestic consumption. So the high octane American wave has resulted in taking up about 16% market share in the world. Now Western writers have been careful to avoid any hints of association, but it's clear that the US has made significant efforts to become a dominant player in the global fossil fuels energy market, despite its green uh, attentions. Now, they're obviously proud of their achievements and it doesn't look like they're likely to slow down and they're going to take advantage of the opportunities, despite all the rhetoric about green energy and saving the planet. Now it's interesting to note the discrepancy in the perception of the same phenomenon amongst individuals within the country. A little more than 10 years ago, the high ranking and much derided US Senator John McCain, you know, the well-known Russophobe, he visited Kiev and in a statement there, he reflected that the US's grand character style, he said, Russia is not a superpower, but rather a country that relies heavily on its energy exports. Inferring that all Russia had to offer was the world was its oil and gas. He called Russia a gas station masquerading as a country. Now, obviously, the dead and late unlamented old neocon warmonger didn't understand that the US relies on Russian titanium exports for its oil refining, or that the US relies on Russian enriched uranium for its nuclear power stations to keep the lights on. So. So the phrase anyway did quickly gain traction among the neocon useful idiots in the Western think tanks and became a key element in the narrative of Russophobia. Now before I continue I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos you can help me fund the channel and my website seobricksinsight.com and to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen on the right hand side. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now the collective Russophobia in Think Tank Land continues to use this phrase to justify its strength and reassure itself showing its showcasing its capabilities beyond hydrocarbons. Of course the realities have shown this narrative to be completely false but that hasn't stopped the Indians continue to parrot the narrative in the face of the reality of Russia being the world's largest wheat exporter and the US amongst others being dependent on Russia for nuclear fuel and fertilizers. So despite being dead for a few years, the ghost of John McCain continues to haunt the world with these false narratives. Now it is remarkable that we are surrounded by the idiots in the media who view the extraction and sale of hydrocarbons by Russia as a negative phenomenon 
while those by America and the West are perceived as a positive contribution to progress, development and a prosperous future. I mean, the narrative Russian gas is bad for Europe, but US LNG is freedom molecules and any attempt to appeal to logic is met with the response that their viewpoint is based on a different set of assumptions. Now, there are many loud activists and individuals around the world like the doom goblin Greta Thunberg who is dissatisfied with the current development and continued use of fossil fuels and mineral resources. And they're calling for a reduction in coal mining plus oil and gas extraction and their use around the world. Now this is allegedly for the benefit of future generations of course. Otherwise, humanity will not survive, they assert that sea levels will rise, everybody will drown, or the planet will warm to the point where we're all going to die. Now, it's widely recognised and acknowledged that none of these individuals have addressed the question of how they intend to maintain the current level of technological and everyday comfort, including around-the-clock electricity, hot water, air and auto transport, the internet, asphalt roads and a multitude of other amenities that have become commonplace and impossible without the use of fossil fuels. Now let's be honest here, unicorn farts are not the future of global energy and perhaps we should now look at what the conclusions are. I mean there's no current consensus among real geologists regarding the level of depletion of hydrocarbons worldwide and that includes Russia. <clears throat> it's important to note that all the sensationalist headlines in the format of there is only enough oil left for 30 years are designed to create an inflated perception of the situation rather than accurately reporting what we're always discussing which are always new and existing fields and recoverable reserves. In other words, the claims made by the idiots who don't actually have a clue about what they're talking about. I mean, geophysical exploration is ongoing globally on a daily basis. There are new fields being identified and new areas of existing fields are being included in calculations. So as a result, the estimated reserves and the depletion rate for fuel like oil and gas in question are automatically extended by approximately 30 to 50 years every time. And that's every freaking year that it happens. Plus, despite what the mainstream media and their half-wit puppies and puppets will tell you, climate change is not settled and there's no consensus within the scientific community regarding the depletion of hydrocarbons in principle. I mean, in recent years, the theory of their natural replacement within the Earth's crust during the Chitonic and other uh, processes has gained popularity. However, there are opposing views on the time frame for this process and to the extent which computer modeling can be relied on. I mean, it certainly can't be. If you put crap in, you get crap out in a computer model. Nevertheless, there's an agreement that the further we look into the future, the fewer easily recoverable reserves will remain and humanity will just have to dig deeper. Now that said, the technologies for the recovery of oil and gas continues to improve. Let's remember that hydraulic fracturing or fracking was unheard of just over a decade ago and is now the mainstream uh, of the oil and gas extraction in the US and other parts of the world. So there's much to be clarified regarding the widely publicised issue of global warming. I mean, the issue of ozone holes, which were increasingly due to the use of refrigerators and are expected to have a significant on global climate, were replaced by the new focus on global warming. Now, a lecture by the esteemed American geologist uh, Gregory Wrightstone has recently gained significant online attention. Now, in his lecture, Mr. Wrightstone pre presents evidence that current global warming is not a result of industrialization and urbanization, but rather a rollback following the Little Ice Age, which ended at the end of the 19th century. Furthermore, the current levels of CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere are currently among the lowest in our planet's history. I mean, recent studies have demonstrated that during the Cambrian period of the Paleozoic era, where the planet was experiencing a global proliferation of life forms, the level of carbon dioxide was six times higher than it is today. 
Also, subsequent periods of mass extinction were accompanied by a decline in CO2 levels. Redstone believes that the current enthusiasm for green issues and the rejection of hydrocarbons is a result of the manipulation of public opinion by those with vested interests. Now, Mr. Redstone's views are actually echoed by Patrick Moore, who is the former head of Greenpeace in Canada. He stated that there's no scientific evidence to suggest that the growth of CO2 emissions is connected to the warming of the atmosphere. Now, I'd like to conclude by drawing your attention to the final item on the agenda. It's notable that the developed and most importantly wealthy countries, including the US, China, those of the Persian Gulf, are increasingly engaged in the extraction of minerals. Now, these extracted minerals are used to meet domestic demand and the remainder are sold abroad, providing a source of revenue that is reinvested into the economy. Now, it's become increasingly common for countries like Qatar, Oman, the United Arab Emirates and now the United States to prioritise fossil fuel revenues in their economies with the expansion of their market reach. Now, this is now a matter of power, geopolitical leverage and financial gain given the nature of this long-term endeavour. So it's understandable that they don't want strong competitors such as Russia in the game, which is why they demonised Russia and blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. That was nothing to do with Russian aggression or Europe's dependence on Russian gas and everything to do with the US wanting to weaken the relationship between Europe and Russia and make sure that Europe remained politically subservient and economically subservient uh, as a competitor to the US in the same way as they destroyed Japan in the 1990s. That's why they're actively promoting the fashionable agenda which attacks Russia because it's eroded the confidence of the rest of the world in the USA and shown it to be the empire of lies and a plague on the world that needs to be eradicated. Meanwhile, those with a more progressive outlook are keen to explore new drilling, mining and pumping opportunities undeterred by the current status of coal, gas and the oil industry. That's the countries like uh, of the BRICS, India, China, Russia, South Africa, Brazil. Now they have the right approach. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, do comment, do share and then you can help me fund the channel by <coughs> clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Now don't forget the comments, please. Keep the comments coming. I love to read them, I love to respond to them, and I love to see them. Okay, take care, and I'll see you all again soon.